Seven cities, nine skaters, one RV, 2,941 miles, 45 hours of driving, and one bear. This is my chance to take the Braille skateboarding team back to my hometown to show them the skate park that we got built. This is the All Terrain Tour. This is just something I've always, always wanted to do. And I feel like this is one of those once in a lifetime opportunities where you just throw everybody into an RV, get in and go. And I don't know, there's just something so exciting about not really knowing what's going to happen, especially because you're in an RV with a bunch of guys, you don't have it totally planned out, but it's like, it's just planned out enough. It's like, we have to be at the skate park at this hour, and we think we know where we're going to sleep. Go. So we arrive into Portland and we get there and the first thing that I know about Portland is these guys are telling me, bro, Portland is fried. It is like the lawless land of zombies. We're driving around and they're like, Gabe, there's no laws. Just go as fast as you want in the RV or whoever was driving. I think it might have been Nigel. And then I was like, what are you guys talking about? And then they were just like, Aaron, zombie, Aaron, zombie, look, look. And I was like, what in the world? But when we got to the skate park, it was so rad. There were tons of kids there. It was really, really cool. And they were all shredding. We have went from going to stopping. Did you rip it off of the street? No, no, it was in the back of the car. I just ran across the whole entire. And then one of the greatest things occurred ever. This random guy pulls up and he's in like a full face mask. And we're like, who is this? And then lo and behold, 
please, <laughs> please. <laughs> I'm so nervous. It is the long lost Braille skateboarding member, Kelly Wakasa. Uzi didn't know? Uzi didn't know. No way. Yeah, he didn't, until I touched his nipple. No way. dreams come true out here. Why was this tour important to you? Because it, it definitely got us closer together and we don't have times like that often. Usually we just come into work, skate, film, go home. I mean we'll hang out here and there but for us to be together in an RV for a long time. Really got to know y'all. Love and hate thing right now. It's great. And as you can see, we have a wild <laughs> McNugget over here doing a lunges. Spontaneous lunge event. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> this poor man's just trying to Crocky stretch. Mate. I had such a good time just bonding with everyone. And as we're traveling through the different states, meeting all the kids, it was a really special time for me. It's really important. You meet people. I like meeting people. It was important because I got to check out like all the cool states, Montana, which I never thought I would go there because I feel like Montana is like one of those states where you think no one lives there or like Wyoming. And it was cool because there wasn't like buildings like here in the city. There's so much buildings out here and it was all like trees and stuff. It was so beautiful and it really like made me appreciate nature more. Wow. Montana had the best people, I'm not gonna lie. We had some great times. I'm trying to get back to Montana. It was just a blast all around. I can't wait to do it again. So this was the first time we really got to get together with Aaron as a full team and actually just go somewhere. And it was probably the longest Braille trip we've ever done. We've done a few trips that were maybe like five, seven days tops. 12 freaking days is a long time to spend with people in a very small condensed RV area. but. I think it was really important for us to all go out, have a good time, and just bond, because you don't really get to do that much. And especially when you're here filming videos all the time, you don't really get to bond in ways that aren't related to skating or videos or meeting people. Going out into the wilderness and into the world and the new cities, I think it's really cool. It was a lot of fun. Why was this tour important for you to be on? It was important because it's important to have fun. <laughs> so we're kind of going from like campsite to campsite and then in between sometimes there's a person's house. So we had made videos with BMX Caden. If you don't know who he is, he's a rad little dude who rides BMX and he's really good. And he just happens to have basically a giant skate park. So we get to his house and we're just like, literally nobody's there. He ended up having to take a trip. So they're just like, yeah, the code to get into the house is blah, blah, blah. So just go ahead. And we're just like, you're just literally giving us your house. And then he has a super trampoline. And this thing is, it's so bouncy, it's freaking scary. So I have been on trampolines many, many, many times in my life and I can backflip anything. So I get on this trampoline and I do a backflip and my jump is too high. 
and I, and I land sort of on my feet, but I'm way too far back. So I did a backflip and then a half backflip and straight, I literally landed straight on my head and my neck popped and I was like, dude, we're one day into the tour and I literally just broke my neck. AK. Hey! Oh, 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 oh. oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I could have died, literally could have died. But you know what? I didn't, and I was totally fine, and I lived another day. And then we jumped off this giant mega ramp into this foam pit, and JD did all kinds of tricks on the ramps. I mean, BMX Caden's house was so, 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 so sick. Shout out BMX Caden. Thank you so much for letting us use your spot. It was amazing. Yeah. Gotta aim for the top like Hello. Yeah, I can never doubt myself, I know better. All of you critics be acting like you know better. Blowing the smoke, but I know when it does settle. Said I'm in my element, it's evident that this level to the game. All of those dark nights I got then breaking my back to make it out, got me feeling like pain. I ain't never need your help. I know you wishing me well. A penny for your thoughts, but seeing no change. I snap for the sun like Diddy. The rich got a mad ass son, I'm like Billy. I ain't never switch up, whole team with me. Put known for my city like OAGZ. Set the pace as long as you finish. Consumers find a way inside your business. Babylon, they try to dabble in it and they hate the fact that they may have to witness. You tryna aim for the top like this And you're in your element with a fire like this And they hoping you fall and they pray you miss But it's all in the wrist, God got you with the switch, you know I'm in the zone, give me the throne One shot, that's all that you got That's all that I know Put on the gas, 155 on the road You could be a friend of me, an enemy Keep that same old energy, cause I know I'm in my element, ooh, yeah I'm in my element, ooh, yeah I'm in my element, ooh, yeah. Flow is like water, I'm forced through the fire, I'm feeling like gold Gotta stay grinding, stay down to earth, following God and you grinding, you do as you told I don't work to make you like me, but I'm front and center, word to Spike Lee And God came in the nick of time, they think I'm crazy, but well, I might be Let's run it up, run it up, run it up, we beating the odds, this is sum it up You know it's a rap, never waistlines, and I'm cutting the weight like a tummy tuck Let me nobody give it out right now, you see what's coming down the line, I never pipe down I give a hundred percent and be trying to stun on my enemies, and my element is crazy, it's the mic's turn Go get him! Go. Yeah. Seattle, man. Seattle. I love that we get to Seattle and then we meet up with Gnarls. Shout out Gnarls for showing us the school to skate at and for being gnarly. Legendary spot. And then he's just doing pop shove it tail grab down like I think an 11 stair in a line and then going and hitting the rail. And then we show up to the skate park fashionably late Again, there's all these kids rushing the RV. Woo! And then we get there. And then I just loved the energy at the park. It was so crazy. And then we played a game of skate with Seattle. They skated the handrail and people were just going off. And then JD skated the ball and did some incredible tricks. And then this dude is like, come to my restaurant. Let's get it. It's so awesome. I'll just treat all of you guys. And then we go there. We go to the restaurant. The food is amazing and we're all going like, is this real? It was almost like too good to be true and we're like, this is like actually happening and it was, I don't know, it was awesome. Super, super fun. I ain't sure you're the right one for me. Didn't I see you involved? Nobody do it like this. Hand on bag, lucky charm that wrist. This is real life, I need someone that. Nah, wait a minute. You need someone that. Uh, uh, pick up the phone every call. I can turn the crib to a mob.
trying to figure out where to park. Oh my god, what are we gonna do? San Francisco Bay Area, and today, we're in Spokane, Washington! Yeah! You guys better go insane. Then we get to Spokane and we're driving underneath this bridge and we're like, dude, zombies. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're like, we have to get a megaphone. So we drive to the store, we go in, we buy a megaphone, and then we go to this restaurant and one of the servers there is like, oh my gosh, Braille. And we're like, what up? And then we eat this delicious food, and then we go. I think the skate park might have even been across the street. And then we go there, and there's tons of kids, and they're all just like hucking themselves down this gap. And there's this one kid who's like trying, I think it was like 360 double flip down the gap, and he snaps his board. And I'm like, dude, just do it. We'll give you a board. If you land it right here first try, 100 bucks, cash out. $100 on the line. Oh, no. Big actors always told the upcoming actors, you want to be a big actor? Go meet the people. Like I said, to be a legend, you got to take an L. Because you can't spell legend without L. I met this dude in a fedora that reminded me of Elijah Burrell. And he was like, Mowgli, yelling in my ear. And I was like trying to help this other dude do a heel flip. It's like the energy is so wild. It's just literally one person, another person, but the, everything's happening inside the skate park. And there's nothing else that really is as exciting as that. The building and he's going down. He's going at mock Jesus. And then he does not stop. Bam, splat, dead. And then the bartender looks at the guy and he says, you're a real dick when you're drunk, Superman. All terrain!
caught it. Who knows where the cliff jumping is? Not that we're going there, but maybe you could give me the address. <laughs> what is your funniest moment that you can remember on the whole trip? We get to Missoula and we go to this sandwich shop and I'm like, I'm ready to go jump off some cliffs and then Gabe's like, no, we're gonna go to the campground. We don't wanna jump off the cliffs. It was kind of like split up. So then I leave with my friend from Montana, JD and I go cliff jumping and then I get this call, Aaron, we got kicked out of the KOA. <laughs> I was like, what happened? He's like, they're racist. <laughs> they're all racist here. And I was like, okay, no problem. We do not need to use their campground. We're not going there, no matter what. And then they're like, okay, we're going to a steakhouse. <laughs> and then I go, and then I look up like campgrounds in the area. And then I drive up there, and then I go to this random place, and there's just this little hut, and this giant monster of a man comes out, and he's like, you want to stay in the campground? And I'm like, yeah, we could just stay one night. We have an RV and we'll pitch a couple tents and just pull it into your campground. He's like, great. It's a good night too, because it's nude night. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Afro Gabe. <laughs> Us trying to find bears, that's crazy, that's crazy. Like, that, that, it may not be funny, but that, that's on a whole different scale of crazy. Like, hey, don't ever go into the woods where it says bears. That's too crazy. <laughs> Don't hit me! Oh, let's go! What's up? Oh my god, dude, I'm gonna cry. Go chase him, no, go chase him. Cry, Give me a second to calm down. I'm gonna pass out. I'm gonna <laughs> Are you good? Yes. Why are you freaking out? Because I watch you guys, like, I watch like three videos a day. I've three watched, videos a day? I watch the same videos I've seen before. What that's the how, heck? That's how much I like watching Dang. you. My name's Aaron Cairo, and I'm a sponsored skateboarder from Montana. Wait, what? You're home, Aaron. Red Lodge, Montana, and this is where I grew up. This is actually where I grew up. My parents ran this motel, the Yodeler Motel. This is my room. This is room one. And my, me and my brother lived in there. And then it was so cool, I actually felt pretty privileged because I could come right out and I could skate the parking lot. And this right out here is where I learned kick flip, heel flip, front side 180, back side 180, pop shove, front shove, heel flip, all the basics. I would just sit in this parking lot 
and just work on it for hours and hours and hours. Right here, we put a hose across this and then boom. I used to just skate flat here all the time. You see the ground is pretty rough. There was like patches and you, we would like do tricks over the patches. I used to watch the Plan B video, Rodney Mullen's part, and I would just have the song in my head. Dream on, dream on, dream until your dream comes true. And I remember just being here thinking about someday I'll ride skateboards all over the world. This is my big bro. I love Montana because that's where I'm from. So I have some like deep rooted connections there. And then I got to do an interview with the Montana Skate Park Association, which helped me get the Red Lodge Park built. This is a skate park that I originally got built before I left for college. And then over the 18 years or so, it had just gotten weather beaten and destroyed. And then I helped to get the new skate park built. I donated money. I worked with Montana Skate Park Association. I worked with the city council and we got it all done and we got it pushed through. And so being there and seeing the parents and seeing people from all the local Montana communities. And you have to understand like this is a small town and to have that many people show up and just have a blast. And my dad, I could tell my dad was like super proud of me for what I did for that community and seeing everybody there and how stoked they were is really, really an incredible experience. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Oh my God. I've been watching you guys for literally ever. You know that guy over there? Yeah. yeah. Nigel, we got Aaron. Yeah, that guy. Oh my God. What the heck, this is awesome. <laughs> Let's go! Oh my god! First try, 100 bucks! I'm really this the star in the shit And yeah, you're now viewing the greatest of all time No need for thank yous, the pleasure is all mine That's my confidence Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. oh, No downplay, I'm an accomplishment You tell me everything, I take it as a compliment I got that uh, uh, confidence Come on now Red line! All terrain! All terrain! 
what did you think of Aaron's driving? That man needs his license revoked, bro. I love you. Stop driving, bro. My driving? My driving in the RV was good, but now apparently I apparently I scared everybody. What is going on? You know, he he's, he doesn't get lost. He's not a guy to get lost. We'll be on the freeway. It'll say like, go straight for 80 miles or go straight for 200 miles and he'll be like this, looking at the GPS. I was enjoying Gabe Cruz's driving, I was enjoying Nigel's driving, Aaron's driving was the one where I would put the seatbelt on for sure. <laughs> when we got to Montana, he's like, don't trip fellas, this is my road. He hits the lights on a one way and he's like, you gotta go count 10 seconds, man. That was like seeing the end of a path that I would never thought I'd see. I got my license in Montana when I was 15 years old. I am 39 years old right now. I've been driving for 14 years. I've been in zero accidents, zero. I doubt any of those guys can say that. It can get terrifying, you know, like you're leaving your, your life on someone else's uh, hand, so. But I love him, he, you know, he, I trust him. When he was driving, he was like literally like this every second. Okay, I, I understand maybe why my driving, maybe why people say my driving is a little rough. Because I was trying to go fast to get to my parents' house on time. I had been driving with Aaron for many, many, many years. He even taught me how to drive myself. He has always driven like that in any vehicle that we've ever been in. And I feel like I have every way I could potentially go out of this life that I am living. I don't think it would be by Aaron doing something stupid on the wheel. Even though it may come close, I don't think that's going to happen. But to my brothers who are not used to that, I understand your pain. I do. I don't know. I trust, I, I trust two people here with my life, you and Aaron. Well, I'd be damned like when I got sons if I let somebody tell me who I am. Here I stand, flesh and blood, doing all that I can. Need no judge.
Thank you so much. You taught me how to kick up too. Okay, you guys ready? Oh my gosh! It's a very special day today. Do you guys know what day it is? It's Chris's birthday! One, two, three. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Salt Lake City, hands down, was the best skate park we went to, had the best crowd, had the best kids. They were going off the entire time. They were just so excited that we were there and they were just like, wow! And everybody was sending every trick you could imagine. The energy there was unlike anything I've ever seen before. And I think that the guys were so, so hyped to see that. Because a lot of times you gotta understand, we're in this giant, sometimes cold, sometimes dark warehouse, and it can seem kind of lonely or alone. And even when we got to Fremont or some of the skate parks here, 
This is where we always go. And sometimes there's literally no one at the skate park. And then we make these videos and we don't always get to associate or see the people on the other side of that phone or computer screen or wherever they're watching. But on this trip, we really got to get out there and really connect with people. And I feel like between all of the cities, everywhere was amazing. But Salt Lake City was beyond amazing. It was super, super cool. The magic of the Braille trip is truly magical. out here in Reno it is above a hundred degrees my man's right here the boss if you can't understand this I was not feeling good out there yeah I feel like hot. I need to go to the hospital yeah. baby yeah, let's go get you a Woo! smoothie let's go get you a smoothie Reno much love kidney stones no love brother final step of the tour is Reno Nevada and I feel like at this time we're fried <laughs> we're like dude we just went through probably one of the most intense two week time periods of our entire lives, which is completely amazing, completely worth it. And then we show up in Reno. We skated this amazing roof, which was, if you fall, you're literally dead. And then the cops came and they kicked us off the roof. And we were like, what do you mean we're not supposed to skate the roof and maybe die? Yeah, and then he was like, oh yeah, you're not supposed to do that. But I love braille skateboarding. Can I take a picture with you? And then we're like, yes, this is the most hilarious moment in our entire lives taking a picture with the police officer who just kicked us out off the roof. I mean, he probably could have given us tickets, but he didn't, so thank you so much. Reno is like in the middle of the desert and it was like 500 degrees Fahrenheit and I was melting and I just felt like my brain turned into moosh. 
I barely landed anything. And then I took this picture of myself in the RV and I said, skateboarding is war. People were like, dang, Aaron Kyle going through it. <laughs> it is war. It's battle, mental, physical battle. And then there's this person there in this red suit. And I'm like, who is this? Is this somebody who's trying to like make fun of us or something? And then he's like, should I do the reveal? And then we're like, yeah. And then he's like, boom, it's Brian Arnett. And I'm like, Brian, I'm so happy you're here. Do every trick you can down the stairs. We're exhausted. We got nothing left. Three, two, one, first try. Myself on display, one, two, three a day. I'm on my way, on my way. I'ma have you on tiptoes, watching my diamond after glow. I know you wanna take me home. I'm on my way, on my way. Uh, this I do it big. What's to follow? What's to check? I need a honey bag, nothing more, nothing less. And the ops feel away, cause I'm next. I'm a threat. Uh, I don't need your money, you can pay me in respect. What's best in the Braille team? I think the best part about the Braille team is just how vastly different we are. I think we're just having fun. I think that was the best, best thing about it, I guess. I don't know, I can't explain it. It's pretty cool. We're kind of like guardians of the galaxy. No one's too cool. No one lets anything get to their heads or anything. We're all, we're all stuck together like glue. They're always really funny and just like saying some dumb stuff, like random stuff. We're just a bunch of a lot of people. We're just a bunch of a lot of people that make sense when we're together. I think, you know, what's special about Braille is that we're all very diverse and we're all very different people. And I think it's cool that we can all come together through skateboarding and just appreciate and love skateboarding. That is one thing that I really like about skateboarding. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, a 10 year old girl or you're a four year old man or I like skate. And remember, when brand new skateboarders come to the skate park, help them, support them, help them land a new trick, and let's get more people riding skateboards. Yeah! Thank you for being such an awesome crowd, and thank you for doing all the best tricks. You guys are the absolute best. Let's go, Reno! What were your final thoughts when the tour was ending? You know, it was such a such an intense bonding experience for 13 days. I'm pretty sure we we're on the road. So yeah, it was it was sad to see it ending, but. You know, I was very exhausted. I was ready to rest and recover, but I, I, I was very happy with the tour. I, I'm actually amazed that no one quit the tour early. I thought for sure at least one person would quit, but no, we all stayed together and we all saw it through. I am glad I get to get away from these people for a little bit. This was fun, but I gotta go. So I was tired of driving. I was ready to sleep. That was it. So I think at the end, everybody was like, we're ready to sleep in normal beds ready to get back home.
but we kind of in the same way are like at the end of this trip that we kind of don't really want it to end. You know what I mean? Like you kind of do want it to end because you want life to go back to normal, but then at the same time you're like, we kind of don't at the same time. I felt very sad because we don't all get to mess with each other. I Personally, I like messing with everybody and that was my time to just mess with every single body and have a blast. It was too much fun. Even if we got pissed off at each other or we, whatever, we were happy as could be mad or whatever, we didn't land a trick. It was still all fun. It was just a blast. Oh no, that tour was so much fun. I never really done anything like that. So that was my first ever team tour with anyone, just skating and stuff. So it was really cool and I was kind of, it was very sweet when it ended because I was kind of happy to be back home and just not on the go all the time. But it was also really bitter because it was a fun time hanging out with all the guys and just skating and doing some funny stuff with them. When the tour was ending, my immediate thought was just like, thank God I get to go home and just sleep in my bed and see my family and see my lady and just sleep for like 48 hours straight. Second thought I had was, just a, an immense gratitude for Aaron for making it all possible and for Braille Skateboarding for allowing me to be a part of this whole massive, insane team for the past almost 10 years of my life. Uh, it kind of all culminated in that moment and that was a lot of fun. Um, and then I think it was just kind of bouncing off of that, going and, and seeing Red Lodge where Aaron grew up and getting to meet his parents and, and cook for them and get one of his mom's like old school famous recipes and, and take that home. I think all of that stuff is like, I was close to Aaron, but now I know Aaron in a whole different light. That's even cooler than before. So this whole trip was, was really cool. Hope we get to do the same thing over in different locations, meet new people, and hopefully it inspires people to keep skating. Cause like skating's amazing. And this is what brought me into this moment with everyone that also shares skateboarding. And then we hit the road and that was it. That was the last, the final leg of driving home when everybody was just pure silence. I mean, the thing about the tour is like, I always think to myself, well, what's next? Like, what's the next tour? I feel like this tour, this original tour was probably one of those things that was un very, very unlikely to happen ever. And it's honestly very unlikely for it to ever happen again, but I think it will, and I think it can, and I think there was so much magic that occurred on this one that I think it kind of has to. And we'll see what we do. We're, we're working on a full-length video part, and that'll be awesome, and we'll be doing like trips for that, but an actual like real tour in an RV going skate park to skate park to skate park, we just gotta do it again. We gotta do it again and see what happens. And that just ruined the whole clip. Mm -hmm.